Hello YouTube, I am back with another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to add cutscenes, or like an intro movie, to your game in Blender. So I'm just going to show you what I'm talking about here. I have um, a scene named Scene, which should be named something else. And then I have a menu scene, which just has Suzanne and a lamp with a camera. So if we go back to the first scene, we can hit Shift Space to go full screen. Hit Play. And you see the movie plays with sound. And then we transition to the menu scene, which is just Suzanne. So I'm going to be showing you how to make this today. First thing we're going to do is start up a new blend file. Next, we're going to go to the top center, switch it from Blender Render to Blender Game. Bring up this bottom window just a little bit, and let's switch this to the Logic Editor. And stretch out this side window just a little bit. Now we're actually going to delete our default cube, hit Shift A, add a mesh, and it's going to be a plane. We're then going to hit the N key to bring up the side panel, and if we scroll up, we can see a little subdivision place here called Dimensions. Now this is going to be our aspect ratio of the video, so if our video is widescreen, the standard would be 16, hit enter, by 9, hit enter. We're then going to switch to the top view by pressing 7 on the number pad and hit Control, Alt, 0. Then we're going to select the camera, that's this little boundary here. And we're going to hit G and press down on the middle mouse button and now we're sort of zooming it in and out. So we're going to zoom it out till it's roughly the same size as the plane and then just move it around until the plane fits snugly on the camera. And we can zoom it in just a little bit if we want to be sure that the whole movie fits on camera. Next what we're going to do is we're going to split our 3D window and this new window we're going to turn into a UV image editor window. We're then going to hit image, new image. We're going to give it a special name. So for this one I'm going to do screen one. Just in case we do another one later I can call it screen two. In generate a type I'm just going to switch it to UV grid and hit OK. And then we get this nice generated texture here. So next we're going to select our plane, hit tab to enter edit mode, hit U, and UV, project from view, bounds. Now this is good, but we can't see our texture on this plane yet. So we're going to switch to texture view down here, and then in our render settings here, if we scroll down to shading, we can see single texture, multi-texture, and GLSL. We're going to select GLSL. We're then going to go to the materials tab and add a new material. This is also going to need a special name, so I'm going to call this one Screen 1 as well. If we go to the Texture tab, we need to add a new texture, switch it from Clouds to Image or Movie. Under Image, we need to select our image, which is going to be Screen 1. If we scroll down further to Mapping, we see Coordinates. Instead of Generated, we want to switch this to UV. Going back to the Materials tab, we want to scroll down to Shading and check mark shadeless. Now we get to actually start adding in our movie. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an always sensor, turn on pulse mode, add a Python controller, add another always sensor without pulse mode on, and then we're going to add a and controller. For the actuators, we're going to add a scene actuator, and we're going to add a sound actuator. And we can wire these just straight across, so the Python controller is going to be wired into the scene actuator. We're going to name this scene actuator into next scene. This is called by the script that we're going to add in um, whenever the movie ends. And then instead of restart, we want to switch it to set scene and select our scene which will be menu. So let's add that in. So up here in the top we can add a new scene. Let's just name this menu. Oop. And for now I'll just leave this menu scene blank. For the sound actuator we're going to hit open. We're going to navigate 
to a folder where we have our sound stored. So we're going to hit open sound and that's going to be set to play end. So now this will play our sound. Next we need to switch our UV image editor window into a text editor. Hit text, open text block. I have mine saved in a desktop folder. Here I saved it as movie.py. The link for this will be in the description, so you just open the text that is in the description. You can see here, it is from tutorialsforblender3d.com. Go check them out, they're pretty awesome. They have a bunch of tutorials on there as well, which are all uh, text-based tutorials, but still pretty cool. We're then going to, in our Python controller, set the script to run movie.py. Now there's just one more thing we need to do. Add two game properties. The first one is going to be named material, no caps. The second one is going to be named movie, no caps. These are both going to be string properties. The first one is going to be the name of the material we used. So for instance, ours is screen one. Movie is the name of our movie file or the path to our movie file from the blend file. So for instance, in my setup here, I have a folder on my desktop called Cutscene Tutorial. I have the blend file, the script, and a resources folder. In my resources folder, I have a sound and a movie to go with the sound. So since this is how I have mine set up, I'm going to type in forward slash resources and this is spelled exactly the same way as the resources folder name here. I'm then going to type another forward slash, and then I'm going to type the name of the movie file, which in my case is movie.wmv. After this, we should be able to just press play. And you'll notice that that was black. Well, the reason for that is because the blend file is actually not saved anywhere right now. So I need to go to File, Save As. Here I have Cutscene.Blend, and I'm just going to save right over that. So Save as Blender File. Now if I hit Play again, you'll see I have video, and I have sound to go with it. And... You'll actually see it started again. That's because right here I have set scene to scene. I never changed that to menu, so let's change that to menu. So in our menu, let's add something so that we know it's gone to our menu. In your case, you probably already have a menu here. I'm going to add a Suzanne. I'm also going to add a lamp. And I'm also going to add a camera. And then I'm going to hit Control alt 0 go back to our main scene, full screen, if we hit play, we see the movie plays again with sound. By the way, this movie was on YouTube. I'm going to put a link in the description. Uh, my personal opinion, really awesome uh, little Blender intro thing. And we see the scene goes to Suzanne. Now, that's all well and good for you. And if that's all you need, then thank you very much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. But I'm going to show you uh, what you need to do to make the video and the sound work together. Okay, so here we are in Vegas Pro. This is the editor I use. You can use whatever you want. Here, I have my movie.wmv. This is the final version I put out, which has everything, the fade in, the movie, and the sound. So one thing is, I have this blank space in front of and at the end of the movie. Why do I have that there? Well, the beginning part is because I noticed that whenever trying to play this cutscene directly from here, it would stutter just a little bit in the beginning. So to avoid that, I put just a little bit of blank space in front for slower computers to be able to load the whole video. The blank space at the end is really just to smooth out the transition between the cutscene where the Blender logo fades out, and where Suzanne comes in later. Okay, so now I have my video. So what I'm going to do is I render out the video as a video. 
and I would normally hit save, and it would render out. Well, I also need sound to play in Blender. So what I need to do then, is after that's all done, I need to hit file, render as, and instead this time I'm going to use mp3. And you can see here I have a sound.mp3 file, and that's what I saved it as. So normally you would hit save, it would render out, and you'd be good to go. So why is it important to do it this way? Well, originally the sound file only went from here to here. It didn't have this blank space at the end. And if I would have just played that sound directly in Blender, it would have been off sync with the video. So whenever I render the video out, I immediately render out an MP3 file as well, so that the sound will be synced with the video in Blender. And that's really it. So thank you very much for watching. If you want to suggest a future tutorial, there will be a link in the description. Thank you guys very much for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.